Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation named Finding Hidden Gems via URL Shortener Services. In this presentation, I will talk about the security risks of URL Shortener Services and how can we take an advantage of it. Let me introduce myself a bit. I'm Utku Shen. I'm working in Invicta Security as Application Security Manager. I'm writing various of security tools. Uh, you can check them on my GitHub account. Also, I'm writing blogs about security and you can visit my website to read them. Uh, let's start with a highly debated topic, security by obscurity. Usually people are arguing against security by obscurity since it doesn't provide an actual security. Uh, it relies on hiding an information from an attacker. If the attacker somehow finds the information, uh, it's a game over. However, in some cases, security by obscurity can be useful. And sometimes you have no other option to trust the obscurity. Uh, let's check some examples. Let's say you have an admin panel on your website and you don't want attackers to find it. The best practice is allowing users, uh, the best practice is allowing users for that endpoint by checking their IP addresses, right? But in some cases, this might not be possible due to different reasons such as cost, uh, lack of engineers to do it, etc. In this type of cases, uh, best option would be hiding the URL with random strings so that an attacker won't be able to guess it. Uh, the same goes for the shareable uh, URLs such as Google Docs as well. Uh, the shared links should be accessible by everyone, but the attackers shouldn't find it easily. Uh, therefore, they are generating the URLs uh, with random strings. But of course, it's not impossible to find those uh, hidden URLs. There are different methods to find them. Uh, when you visit or share a URL, it's locked into different places. For example, if you didn't make a restriction with robots.txt file, uh, Google search engine may index your pages. Therefore, an attacker would be able to find it with a basic search. Also, Archive.org's Wayback Machine saves everything on its database. You can query the Wayback Machine to find sensitive URLs. Another source is Alien Vault's OpenThread Exchange service. Alien Vault also caches lots of different URLs for uh, threat intelligence purposes. However, you can take an advantage of it uh, by searching for sensitive URLs. There is a great tool named Get All URLs, which allows you to search on the mentioned sources. Uh, it's widely used by uh, bug bounty hunters and it works real well. Uh, the other method for finding sensitive URL is brute forcing them. However, it won't be very efficient if the website uses uh, random and long strings. Let's check the following examples. If the website uses uh, common names for the URL path, it would be possible to brute force it. If you have a good crafted word list, you can send lots of requests uh, with a tool such as GoBuster. Uh, the second example, harder to guess since, uh, since it also uses numbers in the URL path. Uh, you won't be able to guess it with common word lists. Uh, you have to tweak it by yourself. However, it's still not impossible. The last example is Google Docs, uh, with, which creates URLs with random and long strings. When you calculate the brute force pool size, you will see that it's impossible to guess it uh, with an online attack. Now the fun part starts. Uh, people are widely using URL shortener services to share URLs. So why they are using it? Because it uh, it's because the URL shortener services are converting long and ugly URLs into short and beautiful ones. Also, some websites such as Twitter and LinkedIn makes the URL shorter by default. Uh, therefore, some URLs are already shorted even if you wasn't intent to do it. So, how does, how does those services work? Uh, when you provide a URL to a shortener service, it generates a short and unique string for it. So when you visit that generated URL, uh, it basically redirects you to the original one. So what is the risk, risk here? Uh, why this is a big deal? In the previous slide, we said that it's impossible to brute force a Google Docs URL since it's a long and random uh, string. 
uh, it will take months to brute force it. But now we have a very short URL. Uh, it's seven characters long. So in order to find the long and complex Google Docs URL, you just need to brute force a seven characters long string. Let's compare their brute force uh, search spaces. The Google Docs strings uh, contains upper lower alphabetic characters and numbers. Its length is 44. And the search space is uh, incredibly, incredibly long and impossible to brute force it. On the other hand, bit.ly string contains upper lower alphabetic characters as well and numbers. However, its length is 7. Therefore, the search space is equals to 3 trillion. But of course, you can say that it's still too much for an online attack. And you have a point here. However, our main goal shouldn't be finding that exact, exact string, right? If we brute force random 7 character strings, or we can follow a pattern, uh, we will be able to find lots of wallet URLs on our way. For example, uh, you sent the first request to bit.ly and received 404 error. After that, you increase the last character by 1 and send it again. You got 404 error again. And in the next request, we got 300 redirection, which means that the URL exists. Uh, we can take a note of the red redirected URL and continue to search. If we make enough guesses, we will be able to guess lots of valid URLs. But of course, to gather a notable amount of URLs, we need a high uh, firepower. We might need lots of servers to make continuous guesses every day. But isn't it so expensive? Uh, how can we achieve that? Thanks God, we are lucky about this and we don't need to spend tons of money on the servers. Because there is a volunteer group named URL team out there. URL team has lots of tools uh, allows you to brute force various of URL shortener services. Lots of different people are using this tool to brute force those services every day and they are saving the found URLs on their platform. For example, they brute force 18 billion Google service URLs and they were able to find 3 billion working URLs. Which means that if you used Google service uh, to make your sensitive URL shorter, most likely your sens sensitive URL is now saved to their database. And the attacker can find it if they are looking for it. URL team also provides a guidance for each shortener service. For example, what kind of URL pet they are using, what HTTP methods uh, they are using, what is the character set they are using, also how much delay you need to put between every request, uh, how can you understand if there is a URL or not. Also those services will be able to ban you if you send lots of requests in short amount of time. Therefore uh, we are using delays here. Also they are providing status codes so that you can understand if you are banned or not. Uh, those guides are really helpful. It allows you to brute force them pra practically so that you won't waste your time and resources. I coded a tool named URL Hunter to parse URL teams raw data and allows users to make uh, smart searches on them. The tool is written in Go and you can find it on my GitHub account. So how can you benefit from this tool? You have, three, uh, you have different uh, search options. The first one is single keyword. In here, URL Hunter will search the given keywords on the database and will sh show you the matched ones. For example, when you search for example.com, it will both match with example.com slash blah blah and another.com slash referrer equals to example.com. The other search method is using uh, multiple keywords. In here, URL Hunter searches given keyword with end logic. Therefore, both keywords must be present in the URL. For example, if you search for both example.com and admin keywords, it will match with example.com slash secret slash admin panel, but it won't match with uh, example.com slash something else. 
The other search method is using regexes. It's good to catch specific patterns such as credit card data, map coordinates, or something else. It's totally up to you. Now let's watch URL Hunter's uh, demo video. Um, you won't be able to... Sorry. Uh, so, URL Hunter, what URL Hunter doing there is downloading the uh, archives from the URL Hunter's, uh, I mean, URL Team's repository. And of course, those uh, archive files are big since it, they are containing millions or billions of URLs in it. And after then, it's basically unzipping them. And now it searches for the given keywords in it. For example, in this example, we are searching for docs google.com and with uh, it should contain spreadsheets in it also it searches for uh, trello.com keyword so now we are checking the output and as you can see uh, url hunter matches with the uh, given keywords on the uh, located databases Ah, uh, sorry about that. The screen recording software is gone mad. Okay. Also, there is another project name. Uh, there is another project is came out after I released the URL Hunter tool. Uh, many of you probably already know the Grey Hat Warfare's S3 bucket search tool, uh, which allows you to search on publicly exposed, exposed buckets. It's a great project and I'm a huge fan of it. And now they support exposed URLs via shortener services as well. Also, it has an advantage over URL Hunter. URL Hunter downloads the archive files in order to make a search on them. Therefore, it takes time. However, Grey Hat Warfare downloads the archives on their own server and allows you to search on them quickly. Uh, therefore, uh, huge kudos to them. So let's talk about what kind of sensitive data we can find there. What we should expect to find. Uh, as a summary, I can easily say that it's a gold mine for bug bounty hunters. Also, intelligence researchers can also get huge ben benefits from it. Let's explain them with examples. The first one is finding sensitive Google Docs and Drive files. Lots of companies are keeping their internal documents and files on those services. To share their doc documents or files, they are usually get a publicly shareable link since they think that nobody will be able to find them. However, it's possible to find the files with specific queries. The most common URL prefix is uh, docs.google.com slash a slash company name uh, and the extension. I really don't know why this works, uh, why there is a company domain in the URL. Uh, probably they are using a paid Google service or something, but I really couldn't find it. But it makes it easy to find sensitive documents belongs to a specific company. The other most common sensitive URLs are publicly exposed Trello boards. Some employees keeping their company works inside their uh, personal Trello boards and shares them publicly. Those boards can be useful for uh, bug bounty purposes. You can find sensitive data there and report it right away. Uh, you can find those kind of URLs with the following search logic. It should include bots, trello.com and company name.
The other obvious sensitive data is admin panels or hidden paths. If you can find a login panel, uh, you can try default credentials or even conduct brute force attacks. Also, you can search for paths of software that has known vulnerabilities. Uh, the search query would be similar with the previous ones. It should both contain uh, company.com and admin or private or something else. Another useful data could be URLs that contain uh, password reset tokens. Uh, some websites allow you to uh, use the password reset link for multiple times. As a search query, you need to determine that uh, what kind of strings are included in the URLs and you need to search for them. For example, uh, the search query should include both company.com and reset token. Some websites are sending session tokens uh, with GET requests. If you know a website does that, you can search for them in order to log in on behalf of other users. For example, an example search query could be includes company.com and PHP session ID, uh, which refers to a session token. Another important thing is map coordinates. Platforms such as Google Maps are carrying the coordinate information in the URL section. Let's say an intelligence agency is expecting a terror attack on a specific location. Uh, they can search for those coordinates on the export URLs. If there is a match, they can contact with the shortener service to find which IP address is uh, used to shorten that URL. There is also another possibility with the map, map coordinates. Some of you may remember uh, there was a there is a platform named Strava, uh, which is used for tracking your running and cycling statistics. A few years ago, Strava published the coordinates of places in which Strava gets its signals. Uh, it was looking harmless initially. However, OSINT researchers are realized that there are tons of Strava users in out of nowhere in the Middle East. Uh, it was a clear indicator that those places are hidden CIA bases. So let's say you are collecting coordinates that are exposed via URL shortener services. And you realize that a coordinate in which is located in desert is appeared lots of times. It might be a good indicator that, that there is something going on that location, right? So just uh, keep that in mind. So as a conclusion, we can clearly say that uh, relying on obscurity and hiding URLs is a bad idea. It can be exposed with uh, lots of different methods, uh, as we explained in the previous slides. You need to set proper access restrictions on them, such as IP whitelisting and maybe authentication, etc. Finding sensitive data via URL shortener services can also be a uh, good bug, bug bounty method, right? Uh, bug hunters may find private company data and get paid with it. For example, you can find um, some private company data in Google Drive, or you can find some DevOps processes and credentials on Trello boards, etc. And companies uh, probably will uh, reward you for that. So, and that was all from my side. Thank you so much for listening. I hope uh, it was an insightful presentation for you all. And I hope you very safe days for everyone. And if you have any questions, and I'm willing to answer them right now. Thank you.